when we first got started, we just, we were worried we weren't gonna be able to get any kids. We were like, well, these kids are from the city. Why are they gonna wanna go, come do this? So we just were like, you know what? We'll try to get 15 kids in each class. We'll do 30 total, we'll have small classes. This will be great. And we had 160 kids apply. So we were like, okay, so small is not the way to go here. They, they want something to be involved in. They want something different. Uh, you hear that a lot. I just want to be involved in something different. Well, there's not much different than, you know, having to take care of a chicken during your day at Omaha Public Schools. Okay, guys, remember, like I said, we're going to go out to the garden today. We're going to finish kind of what we started. I know some of you were running lines. Urban agriculture for me is more like we learn about agriculture, but in a way that's more urbanized because we live in the city, so it's kind of different for us. Okay, I'm going to put each of you on seed patrol. There's planting information. There's only planting information on each of these. So you need to chop up. The backgrounds of the kids range unbelievably, obviously, like our student body. They're very diverse. But you have kids that grew up on ranches down in Mexico. You have kids that have grandparents that farm. But you also have kids who they have no idea what a chicken actually looks like unless it's in a package that says Tyson on it. I'm a city girl, so it's a very different experience to encounter myself with cows, chickens, pigs. So. It's kind of all different for me. Before coming into this program, I didn't know anything about agriculture, to be honest. I learned how you have to actually take care of the plants. You can't just let them grow there. You have to water them. You have to like take out the weeds so they grow. In the academy, um, most of our classes involve agriculture. For instance, our world history class, we learn about the history of agriculture and how it started from the beginning all the way to the end or in biology when he's talking about different biomes or ecosystems, he relates it to the natural biomes and ecosystems that are in ag settings. So it really makes the kids see all different angles. Uh, when we come outside, when we come out to the garden or we come out to the chicken coop, that's really a companion to what we do inside the classroom. So the chicken coop, the garden, the farm, they're all just really classrooms that we just use in conjunction with our other classrooms. What we have here at Bryant High School for our agriculture, we have two raised beds outside of the school. Uh, and that's where we grow the majority of our like fun crops, like your melons and your cucumbers. And then we also have our chicken coop, which sits right on campus, right behind the actual classroom where a lot of the kids are in. I have never had like any pets, to be honest. So it was something different for me. Like I got to experience what it is to take care of them. Hey. <laughs> You know, with the plants, they can start them in the classroom. They can get the uh, seeds planted. They can do a lot of research about where does the plant need to go? What kind of soil does it need? They can look at their soil testing results in the classroom. So the classroom is kind of where everything starts and then you kind of take the classroom outside. So each of these things are marked according to what needs. I am a very visual learner. So this class really helps because we, whenever we're learning about a plant or we're learning about an animal, we can just come over here to our chickens or we can go to the um, garden and like visually see how the process works of growing. So it's really like hands-on. So because of the limited space in urban farming, we need to go upward instead of outward. And so that's why we're training them upward in this size of a space. I think it clicks mostly in the garden. The garden starts growing, the kids start coming up, they start picking weeds, and they see stuff start to grow and they see broccoli like come out of nowhere and they're just like, what is that? I'm like, that's broccoli. They've never seen it like in its full, the full like floret on the top and stuff like that. So you do have that moment where they start to finally see where it's coming from. I like working with the kids. I love it when it's springtime and we can be out in the garden and actually the hands-on stuff. The lecture part is necessity because they need to know the background, but it's more fun when we can go out and you can see those aha moments and see them really learning and doing things. My favorite part about the hands-on activity has been giving me the opportunity to see how things are made because I didn't know that all this process went into making it just an egg. Like I thought it was just like I just got went to the store and got my egg, but no, we have to like raise the chicken from a young age. You have to let it adapt to its surroundings and mature and everything, and then we get an egg. So it takes quite a lot of time and it's given me the opportunity to see what the process is. Getting away from that idea that stuff just comes prepared into the supermarket and actually seeing the production, seeing what goes into it, you know, it's really powerful for the kids. 
I think our students' future in agriculture probably does not particularly take the role of like bib and overalls. It's definitely not the cows and plows type scenario. It's more of the science application. We have a lot of students studying biology, agronomy, maybe more on the economist side of agriculture. Through this academy, they've learned not everything is farm-based. And so teaching them that it's not only farming that it can touch agriculture, I think that has opened them up to different career ideas and hopefully gets them to come full circle and back to agriculture in some way. I think uh, what this says about public schools in Nebraska is that they're just, they're willing to try. They're willing to take that leap. This is not something that I'm sure if you would have told you know, the school board 10 years ago, they'd be like, well, agriculture in Omaha? No, this isn't gonna work. We don't need to do that. But, you know, taking a leap and putting that career and more experiential education in can be, you know, extremely important. And it just shows that public schools are a place where you can do just about anything. And that's why Nebraska loves our public schools. Nebraska loves our public schools. Nebraska loves our public schools. Nebraska loves our public schools.